What is going on, everyone? Welcome to technically what is week three of Redeem the Trash. Um, so as I kind of mentioned last week, my week three opponent uh, dropped out of the league and forfeited the match. But out of like not only the desire to make content, um, but also because you know I had several people message me and be like, "Hey, I'll fill in and I'll play that match for you if you want." Um, I am actually going to be playing that match, but it's just going to be an exhibition match. So um, this is I am going to be playing against Don Mateo today, uh, who's going to be filling in for the uh, for the Sydney Sylvians. And uh, this is the team that they had at the time um, that they dropped. So that's the team I prepped for, and as a result, the team that Don is is going to be playing with. So uh, we have Sharpedo, Kadabra, Vulpix, Chirum for a good Sun duo, uh, Galarian, Corsola, Salazzle, Orbeetle, Luxray, Fletchling, and then to round it out, we have Ninjask and Wooloo. First thing I noticed on this team uh, is they're really, really frail. They have several Pokemon that all could be, like, desirably holding uh, Focus Sash. And on top of that, they're all fairly fast as well. Obviously, you have, like, Speed Boost on Ninjask. Um, you could be setting Tailwind with Fletchling next to uh, Gale Wings. Um, and, like, you have Vulpix plus Cheerum things. And, like, really, their only form of bulk comes from, like, Eviolite like Corsola. Um, Orbeetle, who has pretty decent bulk, you know, 110, 120. And then Luxray, you know, it is honestly one of their more bulky mons at 79s. But obviously Luxray also has Intimidate, so like he's able to reduce special attack, uh, able to reduce attack. Um, I believe it also has access to Snarl, so it can really just be annoying if, uh, if it gets to do its thing. So, um... Overall, like, I've nailed down a couple different weaknesses of their team, you know, being extremely frail and also being extremely fast. So the team that we're bringing this week, um, kind of, sort of, no, this is the wrong team. This is the wrong team. This is the team we want. Um, we're really centered around uh, Trick Room Musharna this week. So we have Culverberry so that we can live a potential dark hit from... Um, uh, like Sharpedo, this lives a Sharpedo Crunch at this range. We also are able to take like Snarl plus a hit as well. So like if they do break our berry. Um, really just need to set up Trick Room with Musharna. Having Telepathy so that we don't take damage from our Rhydon's Earthquake. Um, we do have Stealth Rock here on Rhydon as well. This is like a potential way to just break any potential Focus Sash that our opponent has going on. Uh, Lightning Rod so we can protect our Vespaquin and our Kingler as needed. Hypercutter Kingler, so we don't have to deal with Intimidate coming off from Luxray. Uh, Spirit Tomb is like another Trick Room abuser, quote unquote. Um, probably want to be Min Speed here. Um, like you know, Shadow Ball to do decent damage. Substitute Willow Wisp to be to be really annoying to our opponent. Uh, Vespaquin as like our other Dynamax target here. Extremely slow. I did not realize actually how slow Vespaquin was until I started building this team. Uh, unnerved just because it's strictly better than pressure. Uh, double stab plus power gem for coverage seems pretty okay, all things considered. But like our big Dynamax targets are going to be right on Vespaquin. Uh, Kingler, if we really need it, I'm hoping that if we do our Trick Room thing, that Kingler probably is not going to be very relevant. And then we have Morgrim here as like the support we need to be able to set up Trick Room, having access to Fake Out, having access to Taunt to stop. Uh, a potential, like, taunt from Salazzle or something like that, because ours is going to have priority, thanks to Prankster. Uh, Thunder Wave just has speed control, and because we're not doing screen things this week, uh, it's pretty safe to put on a Focus Sash here. So, that is the team. Really excited for this one. Um, like I said, this is all just for fun. Uh, Don has been... He has been messaging me uh, for uh, several... Probably about a week now, saying, hey... Uh, do you want to play this? When can we do this? And just has not really worked out to where we're able to, but finally getting to actually get paired up here. So let's get paired up for game number one, and we will see you in game. Um, not quite the team we prepped for, but honestly, I still feel pretty okay with this. Um, they do have Executor and they have Purloin here, which is going to be slightly annoying, but not the end of the world. Um... 
They do have the Corsola here as well. So they, this is probably Harvest Eggy. It's the only thing I can really think that it's going to be. But, like, Vespa Queen just kind of eats that up. Vespa Queen kind of looks pretty decent if we can deal with, like, the Salazzle, to be honest. I think this is going to be Musharna plus Morgrim up front. Try to get a fake out off. Try to set up Trick Room. Um, I want Vespa Quinn and... I'm thinking still right on. It hits a bunch of their things super effectively. Um, yeah, let's do it. So with this team, Sash is most likely on the Vulpix or the Purloin. Like, those are the two frailest things. I would be very surprised if they're not there. Um, so let's see. I can protect this turn. And I can taunt the Executor. This is going to stop a potential like sleep powder coming off from the from the eggy here. I think this is all right. Oh, they're just gonna immediately Dynamax. Interesting. I wonder if this is like Shadow Ball. I'm gonna break our sash. It's just gonna be overgrowth under Morgrim. Okay, that's honestly not the worst because now I can bring in Vespaquin. I can Trick Room. And I can max guard this turn. This is going to let me stall out a turn of their Dynamax, uh, take a potential like overheat or whatever Slazzle is going to fire off here. Oh, Thunder Wave. Interesting. And I'm assuming that's Ancient Power from the Eggy. So now I can Expanding Force the Slazzle, break a potential Focus Sash on it. And I think Executor is going to protect here. So I feel safe going for... I wonder if Flutterby picks up the Salazzle after... afterwards. Because dropping the Executor special attack is actually really good. Let's do it. Yep, there's the Max Guard. Expanding Force is going to put it down to Sash as planned. Flutterby takes out the Salazzle. Eggy's going to lose a special attack. It's Dynamax is now over. Vespiquin set up real, real well here. What am I worried about Luxray doing? Honestly, I think I'm just going to click Expanding Force into it, and I'm going to flutter by into the Executor. Okay, they're going to go into Corsola. That's pretty okay. There's a Shadow Ball. I mean, the, uh, the Protect. Dropping those special attacks. And are we Guts? We are, in fact, Guts. Not really surprised by that. Uh, we're going to Shadow Ball into the Corsola here. And... I could go for the Air Slash. Just to try to get, like, a flinch off into one of their mons. But I don't think that's really worth it. Um, this could be... What do I think this is going to do? Be like wild charge. I could swap here to right on. Get that lightning rod boost. Could also just stay in. I think going for a bug buzz here is fine. Ah, oh, yeah, get that read. Fantastic read here for us. Bye, Eggy. <laughs> They're going to strength sap my Vespa Queen. Go back up to full HP. That's fine. Um, we can. Expanding Force here, and Protect. No, I don't want to Protect this turn, because I want to be able to Protect next turn on trying to set up another uh, Trick Room. So I think the play is I actually want to Protect here, so I can preserve my Culberberry if this has, like, Crunch, and we'll Bug Buzz. It's good damage. It's really good damage. A Calm Mind. They have Wild Charge. Okay. So now I can Trick Room, and I'm going to switch to Right On. Thank you. I'm going to Calm Mind again, but Right On don't care. Um, I'm going to now... Um, we know this is Flame Orb. Does Luxray Protect here? Maybe? Could Rock Slide try to get a flinch on this Corsola? 
Let's see. Vespaquin moved before Corsola did, so this is not min speed. We know that for a fact. Could just click Rock Slide here. Let's do it. It's okay damage. And that is enough to take out the Luxray. Rock Slide is now disabled, and we get the flinch. We can now Shadow Ball, and we can Earthquake. Going to not get Curse Bodied. That's good. We get the crit. They strength staff. That's fine. Uh, they go back up to full HP, which is not like the end of the world. Um, I'm just going to stay in. No reason not to. We will eventually get there, right? Like a crit shadow ball, I'm sure it takes us out. We're not, we're not going to get it. Crit, crit, crit. Crit one time. We did it! <laughs> oh, that was huge. All right, that was awful. <laughs> so I think adjustments I want to make. Um, I don't think Kingler was very... I mean, I don't think Morgan was very good in all actuality. I think Mushorna was fantastic. I think I need Kingler for an end game. Um... Hypercutter means I can't have my attack dropped at all, right? So Strength Sap doesn't lower my attack stat? That's really good to know. Um, I think Vespaquin's really important. And I think I want Kingler and... Do I want Rhydon? Rhydon just neutralizes this, this Luxray so much. I think so. I think I need to write on here. This is going to be Purloin Salazzle up front. Could have Taunt. We know it's not Sash. I think we're going to Protect, and I just want to... I could Airstream. We're nowhere near faster than Salazzle. We know this has Thunder Wave. I could Rockfall the Purloin... To then be able to break the sash on Salazzle this turn. Um, what do I want to do? I could Bug Buzz to lower the special attack of the Salazzle. I could just double protect this turn. I don't think that's completely unreasonable. Oh, I was not ready for that. They have Trick.
I'm going to set Trick Room. And I think I want to do Max. I could swap to right on here. I don't think that's completely unreasonable. Let's do it. Let's swap to, uh, let's swap to right on. On a potential... Uh, I'm going to get Eject button. Okay. Well, they're also just going to take my Musharna out. But that's fine. Because now I can Max Guard. And... I don't want to set up Stealth Rock. I want to preserve that information for game three if this is where it's going. Um, so I think I just want to... Oh. I'm going to swap to Kingler, and I'm going to Rockfall into the Salazzle. It's going to break a Sash. It's going to KO after Sand, most likely. They max guard. That's a good, that's a good max guard. That's a really good max card there. Um, this is overgrowth. I'm going to swap and I'm going to. Oh, man. I feel real hard locked right now. I want to rock fall the Salazzle, I think. I think I'm losing this game. I was not ready for a eject button. Holy cow. Yeah, that's going to be GG, I think. I'm going to just uh, concede this game to preserve information, but I feel very, very dead. I don't want them to know what all is on my Kingler, so I'm just going to preserve that information. So let's let's go to game number three here. How do I beat Eject Button Purloin? Probably just Fake Out, right? I think this might be... Morgrim Kingler up front with Musharna and Vespaquin in the back. Do I want to uh, do I want to immediately Dynamax my Kingler? If they lead Volpix plus Eggy, I feel really far behind. If this is their lead, um, if they the fact that they don't have Intimidate on Luxray is okay for us. Do I want to do Trick Room things? Am I able to do Trick Room things? I can. I think it's Morgrim plus Musharna. If they lead Purloin plus Salazzle, I can go for Fake Out into Purloin to potentially... Um, I outspeed Purloin. Right? I'm max speed. I am max speed. I outspeed Purloin. That's really good. So I can get... Oh, my Fake Out's higher priority. What am I talking about? I do have fake out, right? I do. Okay. I think I want Vespaquin. I don't think I want Vespaquin. I think Vespaquin just dies to Salazzle. I think it's Kingler right on. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. I can I think I can handle this. Um I am going to Immediately taunt their Salazzle because I know it has access to Fake Out and Thunder Wave. Like, obviously, Fake Out's not important here. Um, and I want to protect my Musharna. They're just going to max their Salazzle again. Okay. Just Max Flare into Musharna. They know that this two shots, they have Fire Fang. Okay. Um, I can now Thunder Wave Salazzle and swap into Rhydon. They're going to go into Eggy. Here's my Rhydon. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot and did not even think about that. Um, okay. I need to stall out their stun. I need to stall out their Dynamax. This is most likely a... Um, I really need to do this and... I need... If I'm, if I'm Thunder Waving here, I need to swap. 
but I don't want to lose my Mon, so I can't Thunder Wave. This is technically taunted. I don't have a desire to taunt this Executor. It's only shown me offensive moves. So I can swap to Musharna here. Um, is sacking right on the play? What does right on do? It threatens the Luxray in the back. Is that good enough? Is that good enough? Oh, man. What do I want to do this turn? This turn's really hard. I want a Thunder Wave here, and I want to swap, I think. This is really bad, because this still KOs after. Yeah, that's just absurd. They're Life Orb. They have Max Ooze as well. Um, so now I have Vusharna, and I just don't have an answer to this Executor. I can... Thunder Wave it. I can max and Phantasm the Eggy. Man, after just an absurd game one, this has not been uh, particularly close. I think sacking off Kingler is better because it lets me potentially set up a Trick Room in this game. But I don't I don't think that's relevant. Just I was not ready for Max Salazzle either game. I was I was ready for support Salazzle and it just rocked me. Rocked me both games. Um and I led Morgrim in game two. Man, that still just does a chunk. Okay, we get the para there. That's obviously good. Even Oh, they they are in fact chlorophyll. They are, in fact, chlorophyll. I, I should have been able to figure that out. They're a life orb, so that obviously means they're, they're chlorophyll. Um, I can swap to right on here so I can preserve this, so I can set up a... Um, like, this eats lightning rod if they have it. Okay, that doesn't do a lot. That does, though. Um, but now I can... Earthquake and fake out the Salazzle. I need I need right on to hard carry me here, and I don't I don't think it's going to be able to happen. Hmm. Like we don't we don't even know if they're what their fourth is, and if it's if it's Corsola, I just can't win. Okay, they protect the Luxray, that's fine. I'm going to break the Sash, and I'm going to KO with Earthquake. Obviously, I'm also going to KO my Morgrim, but that's kind of whatever. Um, yeah, it is Corsola. Yep, I can't beat that. Yep, uh, so absurdly, absurdly good game one. Uh, just got to do everything I wanted... And game two got thrown off by the eject button on Purloin. Was not ready for that at all. Um, but yeah, just just absurd game. And yeah, Skull's gonna take me out. So GG, um, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you so much for for playing this with me. This was a uh, this was fantastic. I genuinely did enjoy it, even if it's not exactly the team I prepped for. Um, e Executor was absurd. I was not ready for it, even in the slightest. And I thought I was fine, and I wasn't. So, honestly, this this team was still really fun. I think for what they brought, I had weapons against all of it. I don't think Spirit Tomb would have been good at any point. The fact that they were, in fact, guts on Luxray meant that, like, will o -Wisp wasn't very relevant. Um, I could have brought it so I could potentially, like, Shadow Ball down the... 
Corsola just have another super effective hit, but that doesn't seem very relevant. So, yeah. It is what it is, guys. Um, luckily, this doesn't go against my record, but really fun match. So, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you later. Have a good one. Peace.